What scientific studies, scientific details, facts, could potentially make you question everything you know about the link between food, nutrition, and your skin and or your acne? Today I have an ulterior motive and I will share why in a moment. But I'm going to share the top 10 scientific studies, quotes, etc., that stood out to me when I began my natural acne healing journey that really convinced me, number one, that everything I had learned growing up about the link between food and my skin was a lie. And number two, that I really could heal my acne naturally with food. Lego. Hi there, I'm Jill Therese, and I struggled with really bad acne for over 15 years and finally cleared my acne naturally with food and then created my natural acne clearing program, The Clear Code, to help you do the same. Eight years and thousands of clients later, I've made it my life's work to get you clear skin without harsh chemicals, pills, and or creams. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Today, I have an ulterior motive and that is to put the little seed in your brain that it is possible that you can heal your acne naturally. That, that's my motive. I'm going to share some of the studies that impacted me the most when I began my natural acne healing journey. I'm gonna to link to them below. I'm gonna share some quotes. Just so that you can have this as a resource if you are wondering if natural acne healing is possible for you. The first quote slash study comes from the beautiful and brilliant Dr. Whitney Bow, who in a video I'll link to below said, we can no longer look our patients in the eye and say that diet doesn't cause acne. And I'm also going to link to a study of hers below that outlines the link between acne and diet. And I remember, so when I cleared my acne naturally, Dr. Whitney Bow was one of the first kind of mainstream articles, for lack of a better description, that I came across wherein a doctor asserted, oh no, 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 there's a link between your food and your acne. A dermatologist asserted that. And I remember just like wanting to jump for joy. I felt like she finally got it and here was a dermatologist actually speaking to it and I would have literally done a lot of things to meet with Dr. Whitney Bow when I was much younger and still dealing with acne. I'm a certified nutrition consultant, and in one of our research books, research topics, I came across another really interesting quote. This quote was, however, many women who have been on the pill, especially those who have been on the pill for a long time, may be deficient in vitamins B2, B3, B6, B12, and C, as well as folate, magnesium, and zinc. Therefore, it may be necessary to increase supplementation, also, in addition to the previously mentioned nutrients, Dr. Ellen Grant recommends that former pill users supplement with essential fatty acids and vitamin E. In addition to disrupting both hormonal and nutrient balances, the pill is also implicated in candida overgrowth and susceptibility to sexually transmitted diseases. I remember this quote hitting me kind of hard because it basically said that when you take the pill, you become low in certain vitamins. And I remember reading another study that implicated that asserted actually that acne sufferers are commonly low in very specific anti-inflammatory vitamins like zinc. And then I also was kind of struck by this study and this quote because of the gut health implications. Let's talk about gut health while we're here. A few other quotes that came from a few of my research books that I'll link to below went in depth about gut health and how it impacts your overall body. Repeated or long-term use of antibiotics can kill healthy bacteria and leaving particular areas in your kind of colon to be colonized by unhealthy bacteria. Levels of beneficial bacteria need to be maintained throughout life through the consumption of cultured foods, prebiotic foods, probiotic supplements. Because antibiotics, both, both medicinal and in our food supply, are the number one culprit in the overgrowth of harmful pathogens in the gastrointestinal tract, drugs like Advil, Motrin, Midol, et cetera, are also destructive to intestinal flora. I'm also going to link and share another study that really like really shook me. And it was Pillsbury, Dr. Stokes and Pillsbury. I mentioned these doctors in like 4,000 of my videos, so I will link to a few below. But basically they asserted that lactobacillus cultures could potentially positively impact your gut, which could then positively impact your skin. And I remember reading this and just feeling like because I had always struggled with gut health issues. I had always had challenges with gut health and I was either always either constipated 
actually I was usually just constipated. And the more I learned about antibiotics for your skin long-term, its impact on gut health, and then the resulting response in your skin when and if you got off the antibiotics, it really just kind of blew my mind. So I will link to a few studies below about antibiotics and gut health and your skin. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I am wildly obsessed with blood sugar management. It is my favorite topic. And so when I read the following quote, all I could think about was how blood sugar management and your skin are linked. <laughs> and I'm laughing when I say that because I just talk about this all day and it is so huge and we are not taught these things and I need you to know. The skyrocketing of high fructose corn syrup in the food supply has paralleled our nation's rapid increase in obesity. A study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition reported that high fructose corn syrup and fructose in general metabolizes differently than glucose and sucrose. This study revealed that fructose does not elicit a response from insulin, does not increase leptin production, does not suppress ghrelin production. So in short, it short circuits the hormonal process that signals satiation and helps regulate food intake and body take and body weight. Instead, fructose is sent directly to the liver, bypassing the intermediate breakdown steps that occur with sucrose. And essentially, such studies have found that high fructose intake changes the way we, we metabolize fats, causing us to store fat and burn sugar. That quote says a bunch of different stuff. We're not gonna break it all down. But basically, how your body processes sugar how your body responds to an increase or a decrease in blood glucose levels directly impacts your skin because those details directly impact insulin. And I have a video about insulin resistance and acne that I will link to below. But it's very important that we get super clear that mismanaged blood sugar impacts insulin, which impacts other growth hormones, which leads to varied and or hyperactivity at the pore from a skin cell production perspective, from a sebum production perspective, and that that can result in more breakouts at the pore. Sugar can equal acne, is what I'm saying. It's what I'm saying, I'm sorry. It's not all sugar, eat the cookie, but mismanaged blood sugar, it can lead to acne. Do you have crazy sugar cravings and or salt cravings even? We all have, we all do, right? I think we all have varying levels of cravings. And I've always found them to be interesting. And the more research I did about why we crave certain things, the more I was kind of astounded at how much control we have over cravings. Because let's say you crave salty things. So cravings for salt and salty foods is usually linked to aldosterone, which is produced in the outer zone of the adrenal cortex and it's responsible for mineral balance in your body, especially between sodium and potassium. Chronic stress disrupts this process and leads to decreased sodium retention and increased sodium excretion through urine, which makes you crave salt. Basically, you crave the thing that you need. This next quote about blood sugar management is really impactful for what we were just talking about. Blood sugar imbalances like hypoglycemia even, so low blood sugar, can lead to sugar cravings and because cortisol is responsible for increasing blood sugar levels when necessary as it becomes depleted from the ongoing demand for its production. So if you're in this high stress environment experience, you're producing more cortisol, the body is no longer able to keep glucose at adequate levels, which results in hypoglycemia. So then what happens is when your blood sugar gets too low as a result of chronic stress, for example, you might not necessarily need more sugar in the moment, but your body thinks that it does, so it's gonna call for energy. Sugar and glucose, they're like energy, they're like fuel for your body. So even though you might not technically need the sugar, your body's gonna call for it, which turns into a craving. And then what happens is you have a ton of sugar or you grab like candy or something else, right? And then because your body doesn't want your blood sugar to get too high, it'll release insulin, but then you'll be hungry again, you'll crave again, because it'll probably release too much insulin because you ate so much candy, right? And so then it becomes this like constant roller coaster, which can lead to a bunch of stuff, including acne. Now this next quote is super simple. This next scientific study is super simple, but just like, again, when, you're, when you grew up like me, which is you're told your whole life that what you eat has nothing to do with your skin, and then you read something like this, 
Hormonal and dietary factors in acne vulgaris versus controls found significant associations between vitamin D deficiency and a diagnosis of acne vulgaris. Basically, low vitamin D is often found in acne sufferers. And again, like that, the reason this was so shocking to me is because I just grew up with every dermatologist, sorry, telling me that what I ate had nothing to do with my skin when it's very clear that what I eat impacts my body on a vitamin level, right? Like if I only eat cheese puffs, I'm gonna be low in massive amounts of certain vitamins that I need versus if I have a really well ba balanced diet, I'm gonna be chock full of really great minimal minerals, vitamins, all the things I need. And, and also sun exposure impacts vitamin D. Like every, so many different things are impact our body's ability to maintain adequate vitamin levels. But just the fact that acne sufferers are commonly associated or found to have low levels of vitamin D, like it just shows you how much our body's connected. I was also really drawn in and taken aback when I learned about the role that your liver can play in your acne and your skin. Basically, I started to learn more about bitter herbs like dandelion root, milk thistle, and how they were herbal cholagogues in that they stimulated bile flow from your liver and that supported everything else in your body. It definitely supported kind of um, your liver's ability to process out toxins and to just do its job. And once I began drinking dandelion tea on the regular, I saw such a shift in my digestion. I there's something called the confirmation bias, wherein you think you, you think to yourself, oh, I want this thing to happen. So let's say I, I want to start drinking dandelion tea and I think it's going to go really well. So you're going to look for signs that it goes really well. But this was more than that. When I began drinking dandelion tea, I drink it at night. I would see such a great shift in my digestion. The next day I was going to the bathroom way more regularly. It was not <laughs> confirmation bias. It was real. And I'd recommend it for all of my clients now who are dealing with estrogen dominance, especially dealing with breakouts mid-cycle and pre-period because it can really help their liver detoxify as much as possible during those like tricky periods of the month cyclically. So I have an entire PDF spreadsheet that is, I think 58 pages long of all the scientific studies and little tiny micro to macro details about how food, nutrition, all the things can impact your skin. I am obviously not sharing that with you today because you would be asleep. But I just wanted to share some of these like overarching larger themes with you to empower you to kind of go out and seek more on your own. Look for more about nutrition, seek more details on how your body is impacted by what you eat. Comment below if you have questions, if you want me to ever share. I don't think a 53 page PDF is helpful for anyone, but if you ever want me to share anything like that or you want me to share more of these studies with a more specific focus on vitamin deficiencies, etc., let me know and I can definitely do that. But I really hope this helped to spark something for you around how our body is a connected machine and it's not just take a pill and it'll fix everything. If you would like to get really clear on why you're breaking out in the first place now, I'd love for you to take action. After watching all of that and listening to all of that, if you're like, okay, so what do I do now? Take the acne personality quiz via the link below. You'll define your acne personality type and you'll grab three recipes and three action steps you can take to start to heal your acne naturally today. Also, if you want to join a private empathetic community of people struggling with acne challenges the same way you are, we have a private Facebook group community. So make sure you sign up for that via the link below and we'd love to welcome you there. And if you want to learn about my natural acne clearing program, The Clear Code, make sure you apply to that via the link below too. It's application only because I really wanna take clients that I know it is going to be the best for and that it will help to transform your life. So check out my schedule below, apply to the program and see if it's a good fit. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, please share it with your mother, sister, bestie, cousin, all the people who may benefit from it because I would love to be like this little spark in the night for them if they have been wondering about natural acne healing for a long time but haven't been able to kind of like do the thing. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new one and I will see you next time. Bye.